And let's turn attention to business now. Central Bank of Nigeria has revealed the exchange rate for Bureau de Change operators to 1,101 naira per dollar from 1,251 naira per U.S. dollars. This was revealed in a letter addressed to the president of the Association of Bureau de Change Operators of Nigeria, stating that CPN will sell 10,000 U.S. dollars to the BDC operators at an exchange rate of 1,000 naira, 101 per U.S. dollar. According to CBN, this measure is intended to facilitate access to foreign exchange for legitimate transactions within the retail market and address retail market demand for eligible, invisible transactions. The APS Bank also outlines the directive for BDCs to sell their acquired forex to eligible end users at a spread not exceeding 1.5% above the purchase price. And in the meantime, the Federal Competition and the Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, has appealed for robust and vigilant enforcement by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission towards greater transparency in the billing and electricity supply. The acting executive vice chairman of the commission, Dr. Adamo Abdullahi, in a statement in Abuja said the enforcement will ensure balance to the recently increased tariff for Band A customers. He commended the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission's 200 million naira fine against the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company. The fine, according to the vice acting chairman, is for violating the supplementary order to the multi-year tariff order 2024. NEC approved the tariff realignment and service delivery commitment for Band A electricity customers to ensure the sustainability and viability of distribution companies and the entire electricity sector. The federal government has reiterated its commitment to promoting locally assembled vehicles in Nigeria. This is according to a statement by the Director General of the National Automotive Design and Development Council, Mr. Oluwemimo Oshaniki, while speaking on our flagship program, Business Nigeria. According to Mr. Oshaniki, funds have been earmarked for the development of the automotive sector, a step geared towards fostering the growth of the industry and the overall benefits of the economy. A lot of things governments are doing now to to promote uh, local assembly, assembling of vehicles, to, to develop the sector, and to promote the industry. So there are many. Number one, we have a lot of fiscal incentive lying down, apart from tax holiday, apart from, from uh, reduction in duty, and in some areas, zero duty. So all these ones are already put in place to encourage not only the, the, the new investor, even the existing assemblers, we are doing that. And again, just as I mentioned, we are investing in building industrial park, auto industrial park, where all the manufacturers can come together and then enjoy common services, common facilities, in order to bring down the cost of production and then be able to share knowledge. So all this one we are also doing. Apart from this, we, we are working with other development banks in order to make auto fund available at a very reasonable rate. So we are doing that. And if you listen to the interview of the Minister for uh, Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, he mentioned that pretty soon the government is going to launch credit scheme. And that credit scheme, a lot of a, a good percentage will go to uh, auto credit scheme. Let's take a look at the global equities figures now. Shares rose earlier today as crude oil prices retreated from a six-month peak while U.S. bond yields hit their highest as investors continue to rein in bets on Federal Reserve interest rate cards. Europe's stock 600 index was 0.05% higher in early trading after falling 1.2% the previous week while Germans DAX was up 0.38%, but Britain's FTSE 100 was 0.19% lower. U.S. X&P 500 features were down 0.2% after the index fell 0.9% last week, and Nasdaq features were off by a similar amount. China mainland stocks reopened after extended holidays with the blue chips gauge to 0.00 or 88% lower. Hong Kong Tansing in this rose 0.07%, while Japan's decay climbed 0.91%.
Now, while stock markets have made a rocky start to the second quarter as the risk of a broader conflict in the Middle East pushed up oil prices. And now the U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says that President Biden's administration will push China to change an industrial economic policy that poses a threat to U.S. jobs. She said these in Beijing are the end of four days of talks with Chinese officials. The Treasury Secretary disclosed they had difficult conversations about national security, including American concerns that Chinese companies are supporting Russia in its war in Ukraine. Uh, Janet Yellen said the U.S. will host Chinese counterpart for the fourth economic and financial working group meetings next week, where the issues will be discussed at length. Vice Premier Pe and I agreed to launch intensive exchanges on balanced growth in the domestic and global economies. This represents an important part of my effort to advocate for American workers and businesses and gain a better understanding of certain PRC macroeconomic policies. Let me explain. During conversations this week, I underscored again that the United States does not seek to decouple from China. Our two economies are deeply integrated, and a wholesale separation would be disastrous for both of our economies. And in the crude oil space, prices slid more than $1 a barrel earlier today, with Brent falling below $90 as Middle East tensions eased after Israel withdrew more soldiers from southern Gaza and committed to a fresh talks. U.S. works takes out intermediate crude rates to sell at $86.17 per barrel, with an uptick of 0.85%. Brent crude features also experienced an upward price reveal of 0.86%, selling at $90.39 per barrel. And Bonnie Light recorded an upward price margin of 2.62%, selling at $93.94 per barrel. And for the OPEC basket, crude oil dollars offering $89.58 per barrel.